Welcome to the world of networking, where people yell at you if they can't access the internet. So perhaps you just received a networking certification, and you're currently applying for jobs so that you can apply the skills that you studied and practiced out in the real world, and you also want to gather some insight on how to adapt to your desired role. Or maybe you've already gone past the lengthy and frightening job interviews and you finally land in a position, but you're not sure what to do next or how to prepare. If one of these apply to you, then look no further because today I'm going to give you my advice on how you can become a reliable and inspiring network administrator at your new position. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is because whatever I was kind of in the same boat, I couldn't really find any YouTube videos kind of talking about this. So I definitely hope that the advice I'm going to give you today will help anyone who is kind of new to this just as well as I am. Coming from a network administrator with less than one year of experience to other admins and engineers who've been doing this their whole life. I think these are going to be the tips that are going to be the most helpful for you to become successful in your new networking position. So before we start, I do want to clarify that the job title network administrator can be a little bit misleading. So depending on the company that you work for, it could label their networking team and positions differently. So if you fall under a network engineer, a NOC, or a network analyst, these tips will also apply to you as well. Don't get discouraged by the job title. Now before we start, for those of y'all that are new here, my name is Garrett. I got my CCNA certification last year and was able to land my first job as a network administrator and I'm here to share my experience as I go through the world of IT. So if you do find this video helpful, feel free to drop a like and if you want to continue to see me grow, then go ahead and hit that subscribe. Alright, so the first tip that I would recommend is to ask as many questions as possible. Now, this tip is kind of obvious because we're not going to know exactly how everything works right off the bat when we first start, but I definitely recommend this to anyone who is new into the networking fields. And the reason why I think this is important is because the more questions you ask, the more you know, and I think this will also look good on you because this will also show people that you are willing to learn and you're willing to expand your knowledge on how everything works. So whenever it comes to certain questions that people might think of asking, I think some people can get into their head on how it might sound or how others might think of them if they were to ask a certain question. In my opinion, I would rather ask a question that might sound dumb rather than not ask a question at all. I definitely think that if you are new to this field, you should not have any type of hesitations to ask any type of questions. And I think if you work in a good environment where people can come from an understanding of your type of knowledge, then there should be no hesitations on the type of questions that you can go and ask. So I'll take my company for example. Whenever they hired me, they knew that I just had my CCNA. I think I do have a good amount of knowledge of networking, but definitely not as much compared to my coworker who is the senior network engineer. Whatever I first started, I was kind of in my mind on the types of questions I was going to ask, and I was a little bit paranoid because I definitely did not want to look bad or definitely didn't want to look like I don't know what I'm doing. But over time, I did eventually get used to the environment and I'm able to ask any type of question that comes up to my mind and I don't get any slack for it because my company comes from a good understanding of where I'm coming from. So the main takeaway of this tip, don't hesitate to ask any types of questions, whether it's how to configure a certain network protocol to maybe how the ticketing system works if you have one, or maybe what the process is if you wanna make a change on something. Also, don't be afraid to branch out and ask other people in your company. And I think if you do that, that will also give you a chance to meet new people. The more you know, the better. The second tip I would recommend is documentation. You're gonna wanna document literally everything from processes to new types of configurations that you have learned. And if you are working a job that has multiple clients, this is gonna be a really important thing that you do. Every network is going to be different, and the more documentation that you can build up, the better. Whether you're using Microsoft OneNote or Google Docs, it's important to utilize this step so that way you can build your knowledge and you can also go back to anything that you noted down in case you run into the same type of problem again 
and so that you can also share this knowledge with your coworkers. As you're building up your documentation, I recommend that you keep a backup onto your personal device so that way you could utilize the notes outside of work or maybe even at another job. Now, it's important to know that if you're gonna do this, you have to be very careful on what type of information you're going to copy. You don't wanna break any type of NDAs that's gonna get you in trouble for exposing your current company's information. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an example of something that I have so that you guys can get a better understanding. All right, so these are my notes from work. I'm going to explain to you what to put on your own personal document versus stuff not to put. So as you can see on the left-hand side of my tabs, I have some stuff called notes and processes and clients. So that stuff is strict just to the company that I'm working for. So I would not recommend copying those type of notes onto your personal documentation. Now, if you look at the network resources tab, like what I have selected here, I have various tabs in there, like Cisco, my Raspberry Pi, Dell and Palo Alto. So this type of stuff I would keep and build over time and also make sure to keep a backup of. So as you can see from my Cisco tab, I have all different types of notes that I've took over time, stuff from um, copying the configuration from a flash drive, uh, scroll a little bit down, um, doing it on Nexus switches, stuff on some firewalls, and even on my Palo Alto. So I just started learning Palo Alto, so I'm taking a lot of notes on how to factory reset it or revert changes, learning all type of stuff there. So in conclusion, these are great examples of the types of notes that I would keep a personal backup of just so that you can keep this for yourself and for anything that you might be working on in the future. The next tip that I recommend is to build your own network topology. Now, this kind of aligns with your documentation, but I highly emphasize creating your own updated blueprint because from my personal experience and from what other people have told me, you will be lucky if your company has an updated network topology. So, and there's always gonna be changes coming to your network and it's very important that you always keep it up to date. Now, when it comes to building this blueprint, there's many different ways in which how you can kind of sort it out and people are going to try to build it their own way and post on the blueprints on what they think is important. So I will be making a video in the future on the best network commands that I think will be useful when you're building out your blueprints. But in conclusion, you want to make sure that your topologies are up to date, especially if you work for a company that has multiple clients, you're going to want to have updated topologies for all of them. And any type of network change that comes, just make sure you go back and make that change. This will definitely save you so that way you're not having to struggle and see how everything is laid out or if you run into a problem and you're not exactly too sure if it's up to date because you will be doing this over time. And the final tip that I would recommend is to keep your resume up to date. You're going to want to log everything that you have done for this company as far as new projects that you've been working on, new hardware configurations, new networking protocols that you have learned and configured, and even some accomplishments that you have done for the company. This is important because if the current company that you're employed at doesn't end up working out for some reason, you will already have an updated resume based off of all of the current skills and accomplishments that you have achieved over time. And other employers are gonna look at this, which could possibly make you stand out and find another job. All right, that is going to be it for today's video. I definitely hope that these tips will be very helpful for y'all. I've been seeing a lot of support and feedback growing on this channel, and I definitely appreciate everyone. But until next time, see y'all in the next one.